<laughs> All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. So today we're doing another Ask Me Monday, as you probably saw from the title of the video. Uh, so we needed somewhere quick to go today because it's getting dark really quickly. It gets dark at like four o'clock here. So we just came down to the beach, like the park beach area near our house. And uh, we thought it'd be fun to answer some questions down here. So we've got Crystal here. She's gonna be helping answer them and asking some of the questions. And we're also filming on a new camera. So hoping this video turns out because I haven't really done much to change any of the settings. Uh, but yeah, we just got a new camera trying to up the quality for you guys. And I don't have an external mic yet for this, but I'm definitely gonna be getting one of those, just doing a little bit of research, finding which one's the best. So definitely look forward to uh, quality getting better. I think it's time, right? I think so. Yeah. Hey, it wasn't that bad before. <laughs> Frig. <laughs> so for you guys that might be new to the channel or you don't know what Ask Me Mondays are because you just haven't seen any of these videos before on our channel, Ask Me Mondays are a series of videos we do where we answer some commonly asked questions and some not so commonly asked questions that we get from the comment section down below. So if you guys want to ask a question for the next one, definitely put it in the comment section and hashtag it AMM because it makes it really easy for us to find. So we got some questions today and I got to get my phone out. <laughs> Oh, Chris is telling me my face is dirty. So this is the first question we wanted to answer because I think uh, a few people have noticed. It says, uh, Lynn D says, Thanks for braving the cold for Ask Me Monday. <laughs> Love seeing you both out and about. Miss the drone shots though. Yes, all right. So, you know, if you guys don't live in Canada, you probably haven't heard about this, but they changed the drone laws in Canada where you have yeah. to have a license and you have to register your drone, which probably isn't a bad thing, but you also have to have a license to fly it. And it sounds like all well and good, but the restrictions that they put around it and like um, how difficult it is to get your license is like really uh, dumb, <laughs> for lack of a better term. <laughs> I felt like I was trying to be intelligent yeah, there. Yeah, I was like, where are we going? Where are we going? And uh, so I haven't done it yet. I, and I do, um, I know I should, and I plan on taking it. I just haven't got around to it and I uh, haven't wanted to fly my drone illegally yet uh, but they I know that they did just come out with a drone that's just under 250 grams it's 249 grams uh, and the 250 gram and above uh, designation is you know okay what am I trying to say well here? you need if you have a drone that's over 250 Two, grams you need to have a license to fly yeah. it so yes if it's under 250 grams like 249.9 mm. Then uh, you're good to go. But yeah, it really sucks. And when you register, you know, uh, and everything, like you have to map out your flight plan, and you have to, you can't fly it over top of anyone or any buildings. It has to be 100 meters away from from anybody. It has to be like within like eight kilometers or something of any airport, which means like anywhere in Parksville, uh, we couldn't fly because there's like a couple small airports like right around here. So. Yeah. yeah, I don't really know. Not that pumped on the whole thing, but uh, sorry about the drone shots. Uh, hopefully. You know, hopefully we can get that figured out soon. They'll be back. They'll be back. Uh, this is from UGC Crawl. Hey Derek, I've been a fan of your channel for a while and this isn't really an Ask Me Monday, but I, fi I can't find you on Patreon. Any plans for that in the future? Yeah, all right. So, yeah, I've had a couple people mention Patreon and they asked me if I had it because I know a lot of people that are on social media do. And for me, um, it's not something that I'm interested in right now. Of course, we like money and we'd always like more of it. <laughs> so, give me. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, you know, what we've done is we have that recipe ebook that I have and we also have like some merch, some Sydney Nutrition shirts and stuff like that. And I think like that's the best way for you guys to support us uh, because not only do you get something out of it, but we get like, you know, we obviously get something out of it as well uh, from you purchasing it. So, I think. Everybody wins in that situation and uh, yeah, and if you guys already have those or you don't want to purchase either of those I think like just watching my videos mm -hmm. and you know sharing them and liking mm -hmm. and commenting and subscribing and all that is like more than enough Support so mm -hmm. yeah, thank you so much uh, But yeah, no patreon for me But I think for people <laughs> that have channels, you know where they might not have um, something that people can purchase to support exactly. them yeah. uh, You know like my recipe book or whatever. I think that it's like a great idea So I think it's like pretty cool times we live in that we can do this so we have quite a few questions so we'll okay. try to do some rapid fire ones. This yeah. is from Whole Food Plant Based Man. Here, let's walk um, uh, by the park here. I don't okay. want to be like the weirdo filming like just outside of the park for <laughs> like half an hour. Filming children? We're like, yeah. oh my god. Um, Whole Food Plant Based Man asked, will you ever live in a van? <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> she finds that pretty funny. Uh, yeah, would you ever live in a van? I know my answer. Man, why is that guy? That is a van. Me? I feel like I, s I hear a van. No, that guy's just got a loud truck. That's a loud truck, but could be a van. I know my answer. What's okay. your answer? So van life, uh, I definitely, I love the idea of it. I really like that idea of like being mobile and having like everything in like one little neat um, space, you know, everything's really close to you. And um, generally you'd have to be like a fairly, you know, good minimalist in order to do that. 
which is where the problem comes in because I have uh, a lot of like hobbies and a lot of passions outside of like doing this uh, and I like to work on my car and I've collected like a bunch of tools and I like to uh, like tinker around in the garage and all that sort of stuff so um, you know I just I can't see it myself right now uh, but I do like the idea of it. I wonder if we could bring a mobile garage with us. <laughs> yeah, right. Then that, that would work. Hey, we have a van and we're just towing to, like, a garage with like all your tools and stuff. Kind of goes against the idea of it, though. <laughs> I, I think know, I the know. whole thing is it forces you to be like minimal and <laughs> explore the world. It's like all I want to do is like tinker around in my garage. <laughs> yeah. Have like a sweet backyard. And <laughs> yeah. Stuff. Uh, but it's super. It's it's an awesome way to live for sure. Yeah. Mad respect to people that do it. We have some friends that do it actually. Yeah, right? The yeah, van lifers, Iman, and Beck. Iman yep. and Beck, we met them in uh, the UK. Life. Yeah, I know, actually kind of funny that this question is happening right now and we got a uh, little... Um, That's our van, guys. ...trailer park <laughs> behind us. <laughs> Just a $500,000 I know, we should have should have done like a good like clickbaity uh, yeah, title they, for this. It'd be like... This be is like, our van! Van, van life! <laughs> <laughs> that's not even a van. That's a motorhome. Definitely, if I had to do van life, I probably would. That would that would be the van. Um, yeah, I kind of want to hit the little trampolines, but I we'll know. go back. We'll, we'll go back later. Well, let's just answer one more question. Okay. So this is one. This is a question from Space Sunny. Um, how do you make sure to get enough vitamin E on a vegan diet? Thank you both for sharing knowledge. Cool, right. Yeah, so vitamin E can be a bit of a tricky one to get. I know in Chronometer, uh, when I track my meals usually for videos, uh, it is one of the nutrients that like I, I have trouble getting 100% of. So um, definitely like nuts and seeds are really good, good sources of vitamin E, uh, but also uh, one of the super high source that a lot of people often forget about is a wheat germ. And you can buy this in like health food stores, probably Whole Foods if you have that near you, or uh, maybe even some grocery stores as well. Super, super high in vitamin E. So random. And that, yeah, well, hey, I'm answering questions here. This is what we do. Well, I just mean wheat germ is a oh, random I know. food. I know. <laughs> And then uh, not hating on you. criticism over here. <laughs> and then I also know that some of the milks, uh, some of the plant-based milks, are fortified with vitamin E. So I mean, that would be another way of getting it, but you're just kind of supplementing it in a roundabout way. But uh, yeah, good question. So hopefully that and, helps you out. And we've also talked about how RDIs not necessarily have to hit 100% every single day. Right. Like you will get enough if you're hitting like what, like at least 80% probably. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, even, I wouldn't feel no? comfortable saying an okay, exact number, say, right? Let's of course, but my number, but yeah. just saying like RDIs are meant for a wide range a huge population yes and they've also everyone which... and they've also tacked on uh, exactly. some like a little bit extra to just make sure that it covers that everyone's, everyone's bases so RDIs are kind of an interesting thing so yeah keep that in mind as we're well. just walking up here towards the water here it looks so pretty look yeah, how, the colors so right now beautiful. let's see how this camera picks it up There we go. So, I like whoop. having this thing. You can be like, so Crystal, what do you think? Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not that close. <laughs> this question is from Emily Reynolds and she asks, my question is, have you considered... Sorry, that's not the question. We're going to get to that question. Ah. We'll just do it. Just <laughs> She's got a specific order here. Well, because like this goes into food. So this okay. next question is about food as well. This is from Bernard Fournier. I hear a lot in your videos that you try to avoid foods high in oxalates. I was wondering why it's not good for us and how does it affect the body? What hmm. foods high in oxalates would you recommend avoiding the okay. most? Sweet. So I don't talk about oxalates and food all that much. He must have caught a couple of videos in a row where I do mention it. Man, it's a bit windy here. I hope it's not too windy on the mic. Sorry if it is, guys. Um, but yeah, so I, I have mentioned it like a few times because I know uh, that it's sometimes, you know, is in the media and people read articles about it and they get scared of eating things like, you know, greens like kale and spinach and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I honestly, I don't worry too much about it. Uh, but I do know that like spinach is super, super high in oxalates, one of the highest uh, oxalate content of any of the greens. And what oxalates generally do is they will bind to minerals like calcium uh, and some other ones and inhibit their absorption. So you definitely just like want to like rotate your greens and not eat exclusively um, spinach. spinach or beet greens and beet greens. That's another one. Good call, Crystal. So yeah, beet greens are another one. Super high in oxalates. Um, yeah, bok choy is a really good green to consume because it's super high in calcium but very very low in oxalates. This uh, question is from Emily Reynolds, and she asks, "My question is, have you considered making a book for people who want to just lose weight, not build muscle, like a vegan diet meal and workout plan? If not, do you have any tips 
um, you can share. Thank okay. You. Yes, so I definitely have thought about this and I know that a lot of people struggle with weight loss so it's definitely something that I would like to help but the the place where I find like the roadblock is actually like creating the plans because the amount of calories that somebody has to consume are so specific to their own body uh, and their own activity level that it would be really hard to just make a general you know recipe ebook and you know have everybody lose weight on it because it has to be like so tailored to each person's individual needs. So I mean my best advice to you would be uh, go on to a website like plantspace.org and check out their um, their total daily expenditure calculator and that basically tells you what the, the amount of calories that you need in a day are and then you would want to reduce that just by you know a couple hundred calories and uh, you know, eat at that level for a little while until you start to lose weight and then you're obviously going to need to recalibrate that number. So type in like your new weight and your new activity level and all that and uh, keep gently reducing your calories and just staying a couple hundred calories below your maintenance. And that's like the best advice that I have for you and uh, you know, you can always tailor some of the recipes that are in my recipe ebook or just any uh, recipes to kind of suit your needs, right? Yeah. No, yes, anything totally. else to say on that? I mean, there's obviously like certain foods that you can eat that are uh, going to help like promote weight loss. I know beans uh, and legumes are really good at helping to promote that because they're so filling uh, and they, uh, they have uh, the second meal effect. I remember Dr. Greger's video on that. So it has since been dubbed the second meal effect. Eat lentils for dinner, and then for breakfast, even if forced to drink sugar water, you have better glycemic control. Beans moderating your blood sugar, not just at the meal you eat them, but hours later, even the next day. Like having lots of steamed vegetables, like steamed broccoli, and uh, things that, you know, that aren't really calorically dense, but they're gonna fill you up and give you lots of nutrients. You know, uh, asparagus. Whole food plant-based yeah, diet. Exactly. Really, uh, really great at making you feel full because of the high fiber and helping promote like a healthy weight. Yeah, exactly. So this question is from, that was a good answer. This question is from David Gilman and he asks, morning versus nighttime workouts, does it make a difference? Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. The best time, the absolute best time. Absolute best time. Try for you to true, work out. Tested, we've, we've done all the calculations. Cut to commercial. For over 30 years, I've used the total gym. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, the best time is when it's convenient for you. The best time is when you can get there. And uh, if your day is like totally open, uh, just whatever feels best to you, I would say. I know for me personally, I certainly feel best working out earlier in the day, and that's for a couple reasons. Um, mainly because I always have trouble, like, I, I, you know, I like to work out fasted, so sometimes I'll like push that too far, and then I'll go to work out in the afternoon, and I haven't had enough calories, and I don't feel great. Uh, another thing is I absolutely just love it, and I look forward to it, and I know if I, you know, if I go later on in the, in the afternoon, I'm just sitting there all day, like, kinda like twiddling my thumbs waiting to go work out. So I like to get that out of the way early. Um, I know we're kind of climbing over all these like, what is it? like so it's piles seaweed, of seaweed. Is it, like, is it actually like oh? Oh yeah, it's just so it's like sand. It's yeah, it's a combination of sand and no, seaweed. These, these are like mounds of seaweed. Holy! Doesn't smell. Doesn't smell like much. Babe. <laughs> Should I throw it? No. Yeah, I like the mushroom. Don't throw it at me. <laughs> seaweed is like my arch nemesis. <laughs> well, because I don't like it. It smells good. Speaking of seaweed, actually, we had a really great question. Hey. Let, me, let me see if I can get to it. <laughs> this question is from Stefan. I'm just going to say Stefan. I don't really know how to pronounce his last name. Ask me Monday. How often do you consume sea vegetables for your iodine requirements? And how do you prevent the pseudo vitamin B molecules found in these sea vegetables uh, occupying the B12 receptors? In other words, do you consume B12 supplements on different days you consume B, uh, sea vegetables? Oh, okay, cool. Well... Yeah, I have, I've heard of this before, and I know that uh, some algaes, like spirulina is the one that I've heard of the most, have some B12 analogs in it, and they can uh, plug up the receptors so you don't absorb as much of the active B12 that we want. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I don't, honestly, I don't think about it too much because I don't consume, uh, you know, those sort of algaes, really. I have, uh, I will have some dulse and uh, nori. other nori and uh, seaweed flakes that we have, which is like a variety of them. But those, they, have, they might have some B12 analogs in them, but it's not a whole lot. And you're not consuming a ton of this food either. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I don't really think too much about it. Definitely a good question, though. I like that you guys are like thinking of this kind of stuff and putting things together and being like, is this going to be an issue? It's really cool. Uh, yeah, I don't really... 
you know, I honestly don't know too much about it. I know that Dr. Gregor has a few videos on um, spirulina and I think he touches on that in there. You might want to go and, and check that out. Uh, but for me, it's not something I think about and I just uh, take a B12 supplement every couple days and I consume uh, seaweed flakes for my iodine and don't really think about them yeah, all and that Yeah, and we don't use spirulina anymore. For one, of, That's one of the reasons as well. We used to use it a lot and it's really easy to take a lot of spirulina. You have in a couple of tablespoons or of that in your smoothie or something. Yeah, it is. Maybe not a, t a couple of tablespoons, maybe a tablespoon, but that's a lot <laughs> compared to how much like iodine flakes you're going to be having or nori. So exactly. It's very concentrated too. I would Yo, say. this is crazy. Like, this I know, like, I'm kind of like... Look at this, guys. <laughs> like, this wall of like seaweed that we got here. <laughs> Yeah, it's really crazy. Yeah, it like. is. Crystal found a jellyfish. Let's check it out. It's like a blob of jelly, but <laughs> also, can we just do this? Look how pretty that is. That is pretty. Definitely not a jellyfish. No, but I did find Oh, okay. <laughs> Where's the jellyfish? Jellyfish right here. Oh, cool. You gonna pick it up? Um, no, because sometimes they can... No, he's get not gonna be... No, he's not stinging nobody. Wow. Should you put it back in the water? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, see, you're a little scared to touch it. Yeah, no, I don't want to touch it. <laughs> you're a little scared to touch it. Uh, we Maybe, could try. We could just, why don't we just grab okay, it grab, with a bunch of seaweed? Okay, you do that. Well, babe. Your turn. Okay. Problem with jellyfish is you never know if it's like... Still kind of like living. <laughs> oh, oh, definitely getting pitted. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably like, why'd you do that? So Ryan Bruce asks, what do you do or consume to fight being sick? Cold, flu, sinus infection, etc. Cool. So the number one thing that you can do, and we'll we'll uh, turn it to Crystal, who used to be a nurse, for this piece of advice, <laughs> right? Because this is what they tell. This is what they teach you a biggest lot. Biggest thing I learned. The biggest thing I learned. The number one thing you can do to prevent getting sick is washing your hands. It is so important. So as soon as you get home from being out and about, especially this time of year, people are sick and they're going out and they're buying a bunch mm -hmm. of stuff. Wash your hands when you get home. Cool. Just make sure to wash your hands. For me, it's from at the gym. And especially the gym, after the gym. There's oh, so many germs gosh. at the gym. And actually our um, immune system is compromised after we work out really hard. So we're really vulnerable to getting sick. And yeah, I know I'll be like working on touching everything and then I'll like, you know, I don't know. I'll be like, oh is there something up with my like you know is my, <laughs> oh, whatever is there something you know, stuck in my tooth and I'll touch it you know and, uh, and, then, and I'm yeah. like yeah I'm for sure getting sick you know but I haven't yet this year so fingers so, crossed but yeah one thing that wash do. your hands second thing is to eat like really nutrient-dense food yeah Whole eat, food plant-based diet stay nutrient -dense. stay hydrated blah, blah, blah these are all sleep well blah, yeah. blah. these are all boring <laughs> things <laughs> number, number three thing that really has helped and we have oh yeah we this we both it. really like this is elderberry syrup Delicious. so this is a um, <laughs> This is definitely like a, a, a time, you know, a really old remedy, uh, but there is some really good science behind it, and it has been shown to lengthen the uh, severity, or Not sorry, it's been shown to shorten <laughs> the length and severity of uh, colds and flu, which is pretty amazing. There's not a lot of things that have been scientifically proven to do that. So Crystal's doing show and tell again. <laughs> it's more that is, that's an actual oyster with that's, one oh, in there. That's not. Um... Yeah, it's not opened. Yeah, I don't think neat. it can see it though. I don't know if it's. You have that's to mind really it. cool. And it's just on a rock. So, anyways. But yeah, we really like that the elderberry syrup. It's um, you know somewhat affordable. I don't know, whatever. Uh, yeah. So but we actually really... scientifically proven. It's yes. affordable to yeah. buy. You can find it in more houses for. <laughs> what did I just say? I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know, man. You can, you but can find it in more than most one thing, health food stores. One thing you want to watch out for, though, is that a lot of them are sweetened with honey. So if you mm. want to keep it 100% vegan, then you have to find one that is sweetened without honey. And uh, we we do actually have one at the local health food store that isn't. Uh, so yeah, definitely look out for that. Lots of fruits and vegetables. Uh, wash your hands. Fermented sleep foods. well. Fermented foods. Another good one. Why didn't I oh think my of this? Gosh. Your, yeah, so whatever it is, such a large percentage of your immune system is in your gut. In your so we want to have a really healthy gut bacteria and healthy balance of flora. So yeah, having fermented foods like sauerkraut and kimchi 
are a really great way to boost your immune system. Good call. I can't believe I almost forgot that. That's one of those things where after we do those videos, I'm laying in bed and I'm just like thinking over the day, you know, and I'm just like, <laughs> God, how did I forget that? <laughs> uh, but if you guys have any other like remedies, yeah, what do you guys what do? What do you guys do? Um, we'd love to know. So put them in the comments, and it just helps the uh, the other people in the community get more ideas on what they can do. Uh, I think that's probably it. Well, there's a there's a few questions. There's a few other questions. Well, we gotta well, save okay, some we'll, for another week. Like we're gonna well, answer. We got, we got a lot. We got a lot. We got a lot. Okay. This is an interesting one because I think this is another question that people can put in okay. the comments. Okay. This is from Geller. Uh, asks, my question is, which whole grains are your favorite? I try to eat three servings a day, but I can't really find different sort of whole grains that are super tasty. <laughs> yeah, well... They're pretty plain foods. I'm gonna go on the high side here. <laughs> yeah, let's go up here so we don't have to battle the seaweed, the seaweed again. seaweed walls. <laughs> yeah, so as far as uh, them being tasty or not, like, you know, generally unless you really have a taste for it, like they're not going to be all that tasty. Like if you just eat straight like wheat or, or uh, barley or whatever, like it's not very good. That's why a lot of the time it's in like soups and in other things. Uh, so yeah, I mean, a couple uh, ones that people might not think about. Uh, there's one that we really like, and I don't cook with it enough, but it's called farro. And it's got a really uh, sort of chewy texture mm -hmm. and a fairly mild flavor, but it takes on flavors really, really well. Uh, and, it, and it cooks pretty quickly as well. All right, camera cut out on us there because uh, it didn't like us filming for that long at one time. So we're gonna have to figure that out. But here we go, keep moving. Uh, not sure if you guys heard all that, but yeah, frike, pearl barley, or just barley, farro. Uh, all really good ones. Of course, you got yeah. your oatmeal, you got your quinoa. Yeah, steel cut yeah, oats. That's another great one. Steel cut oats are, uh, you know, they're not a completely whole grain. They've been like broken up a little bit, but there's generally some processing with most of these grains. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's another one. And uh, as far as making it tasty, that's up to you. Put some sauce on there, throw some garlic mm. powder and onion powder in there, and you'll be good to go. But that's why I wanted to uh, ask that because I think it like so there's so many grains out there and so if you guys have any suggestions like what is your favorite type of whole grain to include? I think we like we really like quinoa and you yep. know, rice. Um, I know and everyone in the comments is gonna be like quinoa is a seed. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever oh. it takes the place of a grain though. Oatmeal, okay, frig. All right, guys. So I think that's probably it for this video. I hope you guys got something out of it and definitely leave your questions for the next Ask Me Monday in the comments down below. Hopefully we'll do it in a week or two, depending on the weather. It's getting pretty bad at this time of year, but uh, yeah, we might be somewhere nicer in a couple weeks anyways. Who knows? <laughs> so thanks, Crystal, for asking the questions. Thanks for your input. Always, always valuable. And I really appreciate that. You're welcome. Yeah. And I think everyone else does as well. So shout out to Crystal for, uh, you know, always showing up. <laughs> anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. And uh, actually, I think we're going to go back here and I'm going to try and get a little jump on the little mini trampolines that there are. So there's some really cool little trampolines at this park. Yeah, let's go back here and do this. <laughs> All right, guys. So, uh, yeah, get out there, have some fun, go explore nature, and I will see you guys soon with another video. Bye. All right, check it out. So these are the little trampolines that I'm talking about. So they've got them spaced out. And it's kind of a perfect distance where you can go and, like, jump from one and just barely make it to the other one. So it's really cool. I think it's, like, such a neat little thing for them to have. <laughs> All right, I'm going to see if I can do the big jump. Think I can make it across both of them? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Did I get some good air? Yeah, you did. <laughs> Once more, one more, one more. <laughs> uh, don't ask if I can do that because I can't. I cannot jump from that to that, which makes no sense because I have really long legs, but I haven't gotten it yet, so. <laughs> oh my god, that's so far. Oh no. <laughs> oh! Yeah! <laughs> Man, I don't know what it is about you, but kids <laughs> love you. Like, yeah. Every, every time just, I'm there. Like, attract to you. You're like, yeah. I don't know, you're like glue. They're just like, <gasps> every, I know. Every time I go and do that, there's always like a group of kids that sort of start to gather around and then we start challenging each other. It's really fun. <laughs> Anyways, get out there, guys. Have fun. It's a pretty cool world we live in, man. There's a lot of opportunity out there. People just want to be nice and have fun. So get out there, move your body. Jump on a trampoline or two, make some friends with some kids. That oh, sounds kind of bad, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, really well, bad. you know what I mean. Uh, you know. Cut. <laughs>